Our home planet has been compared to a blue marble because the majority of its surface is covered by beautiful blue water, a fundamental requirement for life. Land-based life requires fresh, drinkable water, which is not evenly distributed or readily available across much of the planet. If we imagine that all of the water on the planet fits into this one-gallon pitcher, most of it is salt water in the oceans. All of the world's fresh water would fill only three shot glasses, two of which are frozen as polar ice. The remaining shot glass of fresh, liquid water is mostly underground. Of our imaginary gallon of water, the drinkable water on the Earth's surface is the size of a single M&M. All renewable fresh water comes from snow and rain. Climate experts have built computer models to understand how the changing climate system will affect renewable water availability. As the climate gets warmer, wet areas will get wetter and dry areas will get drier, making the distribution of water more uneven. This will affect everyone. For example, people in Southern Asia who rely on seasonal rains to bring moisture from the Indian Ocean have already been impacted by increasingly violent monsoons. These monsoons cause currents of warm, wet air to flow into the towering Himalayas, bringing rain and snow to the land. This water feeds some of the Earth's largest rivers. These rivers provide water to the peoples of South Asia and parts of China. Almost a quarter of the world's population depends on water that flows from the greater Himalayan region. Civilization emerged near renewable supplies of fresh water. In Western Asia, the lush Indus River Valley saw some of our earliest cities. And in the fertile crescent of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, the well-watered land gave birth to agriculture. Water is required for populations to flourish, and it's easy to see our water footprint from space. The border between Egypt and Israel is a clear example of different agricultural practices and water usage. While the Egyptian side is heavily grazed and brown, the Israeli side shows large areas of mechanized agriculture. The land on the right has made a remarkable recovery and is visibly greener. People are developing many ways to make the most of precious water. In the Middle East, super-efficient drip systems and modern greenhouses support plants in otherwise barren areas. Water is supplied below ground where the roots are, instead of being allowed to flow freely on the surface where much of it would evaporate. This system uses two-thirds less water than traditional irrigation methods, enabling arid deserts to produce bountiful vegetables. By using innovative technology, farmers in Egypt are using limited water supplies to grow crops in areas far from the fertile lands of the Nile River Valley. Here we see the land on the fringes of the Nile, the Sahara Desert. Badawi, an innovative farmer, describes the scene. Some organic soil is mixed in and drip irrigation pipes provide water. The drip feeds all the way down the line. I used to have to leave the water flowing four or five hours when I was using flood irrigation. Now I can do the same watering in an hour. This farmer grows onions, zucchinis, cucumbers, and several kinds of peppers. These fields have only been here a few years and are already producing for the market. This land will grow anything, guava trees, anything, anything except for bananas. In the American West, much of which relies on the Colorado River, people pay special attention to water. As with the Himalayas, snow falls in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado and feeds the Colorado and Platte Rivers. And like the Nile in Egypt, the Colorado River provides much of the water supply the dry southwestern areas of the United States.
climate models suggest that this area will become drier as snowfall and snowpack decrease during this century, reducing the river's volume. Drought is a reality in the southwestern United States, and already reservoirs are storing less water as flow rates diminish. Reseeding shorelines are appearing like bathtub rings around many reservoirs, a stark reminder of dropping water levels. The Colorado River is a vital resource for 35 million people, including half of California's population. And people are considering techniques for maximizing available water from this overstressed resource. Across the Southwest, three quarters of all water is used for irrigation. In Colorado, up to 90% of water is used for agriculture using traditional irrigation techniques. As pressures on our water supply increase, we need to become more efficient in our water usage and apply new technologies to help us conserve. Luckily, we have the tools and technologies in hand to make more out of our water supply. But first, we have to put these solutions in place. We need forward-thinking policies like those in Denver, which saves over a quarter billion gallons of water a year by using recycled water in City Park. In agriculture, drip systems in the Middle East have shown that we can save significant amounts of water over traditional irrigation practices. As individuals, how we water our gardens, wash our cars, and use water around our homes matters. And we can raise public awareness through groups like the Colorado and California Foundations for Water Education. These groups promote forward-thinking water conservation. And you can help too, by supporting regional projects, using water more wisely, and by spreading the word. The Earth can provide enough renewable fresh water to sustain us all. However, we need to make better use of it so everyone gets what they need. Sharing education, technologies, and approaches to using water more wisely will enable us to balance water supplies with our growing needs. We face challenges, a changing climate, population growth, and shifting water availability. But people are resilient and are proving every day that we can do more with less and make the most of our M&M's worth of fresh water. The Worldviews Network is helping to raise awareness about water and other global environmental issues relevant to communities across the United States. Find us at worldviews.net to learn more about what you can do.